Welcome, Wanderer, to one of the most prestigious places in Greece, the theater. I'd tell you, but I think it's best to let the actors speak for themselves. The theater was where audiences gathered to watch plays. They were the highest form of art in Greece, and people saw theater as a symbol of complete harmony between the mortal world and the divine. When you're done taking in the sights and sounds, come see me, and we'll talk more. Until then, Wanderer. is not just part of geek culture, but was a major part of Greek culture. In Athens, comedies and dramas originated from the dancing and singing performed by members of the cult of Dionysus. Between 536 and 533 BCE, theater's burgeoning importance in Athens was demonstrated when the responsibility of organizing tragedies was entrusted to the Archon, the highest ranking magistrate in the city. From then on, theater grew rapidly in popularity, and soon, a permanent space for performing and watching plays was built on the slope of the Acropolis. During the 5th century BCE, theater became intertwined with Athens' democracy. It often functioned as an echo chamber for political ideas, and in some cases, it could even influence public opinion. As a result, in the 4th century BCE, Plato coined the term theatrocracy to describe his city's politics.
Theatrical competitions were held in the sanctuary of Dionysus Eleutherios, god of wine and patron of drama. Dionysus was the son of Zeus and a mortal woman named Semele. Stories say that Zeus, who had fallen in love with Semele, appeared to her holding a lightning bolt in his hand. Semele was tragically struck dead by the lightning, but Zeus managed to save her unborn child, keeping the embryo in his thigh until it fully gestated. This is why the name Dionysus is sometimes thought to mean born twice. In Athens, theater was a part of the cult of Dionysus and stage productions in the gods' honor were held during festivals like the Linnea and the great Dionysia. In Athens, there were three festivals that honored Dionysus with drama performances. The Rustic Dionysias, the Linnea, and the Great Dionysia. For the Rustic Dionysia, each Demi of Attica organized their own Dionysiac procession. The parades were full of phallic songs, dances, and, and participants wore drunkard masks and sang the Linnea was the oldest Dionysian festival. It was exclusively reserved for Greek citizens and mostly made up of comedy performances. Finally, the Great Dionysia was the most important festival. Taking place over several days, it began with a parade called a phallophori, followed by a dithyram contest and ending with consecrated drama competitions. The Great Dionysia was supervised by the head magistrate known as the Archon, who was assisted by 12 other magistrates. Among his duties, the Archon picked Korigoi, rich Athenian citizens responsible for providing the budget for rehearsals and performances. Two days before the Dionysia, a ceremony called the Proagon took place where playwrights introduced their work. The Dionysia finally began in earnest with a procession to the god's temple, followed by sacrifices and a symposium. The next two days centered on dithyram contests, while the final four days were dedicated to drama competitions. The contest's outcomes were decided by 10 judges who were appointed at random by the Archon. The judges placed their votes in an urn and five of the votes were randomly picked to determine the winner. Athenian stage actors were male, regardless of whether they were playing men or women. Tragedies originally featured only one actor performing alongside a chorus, eventually reaching a maximum of four. Adding more roles opened up the opportunity for dramatic dialogue. During performances, they prepared themselves in the skene, a building that served as a backstage area, before emerging onto the proskenion. Or stage. The skene could be painted to represent backdrops like palaces, temples, and tombs. Its roof was reserved for appearances by the god. These gods could be moved around with a crane called a makane, which produced spectacular visual effects. On stage, actors wore masks and elaborate costumes. For tragedies, they were adorned with magnificent clothes. While for comedies, actors playing male characters wore hugely exaggerated phalluses, probably to maximize the laughs. The 
centerpiece of the theater was the orchestra, or dancing. It was a large, circular area that hosted choral performances, religious rites, and presumably, acting. Choruses were composed of men wearing masks and costumes. Any Athenian citizen could be choratai, as long as they were selected by the chorus director. Chorus members also served as the equivalent of a curtain, as their entrance and exit marked the beginning and end of the play. New costumes and masks were produced for the chorus for every new play, and they were often just as impressive and elaborate as the performances. For example, Aristophanes' comedies feature the chorus dressing as wasps, frogs, birds, clouds, and islands. One of his plays, The Knights, even had men riding other men dressed as horses. Athens Theatron, or performance space, could seat up to 17,000 people, nearly a tenth of the population of Attica. Its excellent acoustics made it ideal for drama, but it was also sometimes used for political meetings and parades. The theater was accessible to everybody. This did not mean that seating was free, though. The first rows were normally where priests and public officials sat while the central part of the auditorium was reserved for ambassadors. There is also evidence that men and women sat separately. In general, theater audiences were emotional and noisy. During performances, they would shout, curse, and throw things, depending on their mood. And their reactions were just as much a part of the experience as the acting. Hello again, Wanderer. I hope your visit was entertaining. Though all art forms were important in Greek culture, none had the same prestige as theater, which provided a unique experience with every performance. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Really? Then let's begin. Who was Dionysos' mother? Correct! Unfortunately, Semele died before her son was born, but Zeus saved the unborn baby and raised him as a god. Next, another question. Which competitions took place on the second and third days of the Great Dionysia? No. The drama contests were reserved for the final four days of the festival. Try again. Dionysos was the god of wine, so there's no doubt drinking occurred during the festival, but it wasn't limited to a paltry two days. Keep trying. Yes, the Theramvi were hymns dedicated to Dionysos and the Thirambos contests were held on the second and third days of the festival. And finally, the last question. Which of the following is the oldest festival dedicated to Dionysos? The rustic Dionysia was not the oldest Dionysiac festival. Keep trying. The Great Dionysia was one of the largest festivals dedicated to the god, but not the oldest. Try a different answer. You are correct. The Linia was the oldest Dionysiac festival. Congratulations, Wanderer. You're a very studious theater goer. Then I will leave you be. Farewell, Wanderer.